morning everybody welcome back to the shop today josh brought in his tj rubicon we're gonna be doing an overhaul of the transfer case now this is the 241 rock track um, it's the same in a tj as it is a jk in uh, some other applications as well as far as the basic design however input shafts output shafts things like that may change a little bit so your mileage may vary this is for a tj if you're going to use this video in reference to anything else you may be working on just understand there may be a little bit of differences. All right, you guys know when I set up gears, I like to have a pretty sterile work environment. And granted, it's sterile for a workshop anyway. So I'm putting all my new parts here for the transfer case on a towel. That does two things. A, it keeps the dust off of the parts. So they stay nice and clean. But B, it's, I, it's easy to identify stuff when it's sitting on the towel. If these bearings and seals were up against the uh, table down below, it'd be a little bit harder to see what's going on. This towel makes it nice and bright, easy to see everything. We'll actually take the transfer case apart on my drip pan over here, and uh, that way we're not getting oil all over the welding table or anything like that. So a nice, good workspace is good. If you're in your garage, you can do the same thing on the floor. Just put your drip pan on the floor and keep your parts separate. So we have to get the Jeep up in the air in order to get the transfer case out. If you're in a garage, I understand how this works. You're gonna be working on the ground and that sucks, especially when it's cold outside. But in this case here, there's two of us, we have a lift. We'll get the six bolts off of the transfer case, get the two drive shafts out, and then we'll also disconnect the linkage. And then we'll get that transfer case out and on the table. two hours later. All right, so getting this thing out of your, your uh, Jeep's probably the biggest pain in the butt. Once you get it out on a bench top, it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier. Now we need to start taking uh, things apart to get this case in half. You need to get your yokes off of both sides, start uh, pulling stuff apart. We'll kind of talk about it as we go. All right, so if you don't have a impact wrench, then you're gonna have to get a fitting on here somehow, maybe get a pipe wrench on there, use a cheater bar to get that nut off, but we have an impact wrench to get this off, so we're gonna take the easy way. Now watch me break my... All right. Makes life so much easier. Same thing for the other side. I'll hold this up real quick. With the yoke nut off, this should pull right out as so. All right, we've got to take a speed sensor off next, start working things. We just finished draining the uh, transfer case. There's quite a bit of fluid in there, so make sure that your fluid catch container isn't full. It came right to the top of mine. We almost had a Exxon Valdez accident in my garage, but we're good now. All right, for those that don't know, the Exxon Valdez was a massive oil spill up in Alaska. Somebody said I better clarify that for the young kids in here. For the new generation, you're probably looking at the Deepwater Horizon incident where all that was leaked. Anyway, you're gonna have a bunch of fluid going everywhere, so make sure you have plenty of rags available and a good sense of humor. Oh yeah, it's coming. So your flange, if you don't have a yoke, the flange may be a little bit tight. Just get a puller of some sort and it'll come right off. Okay, now that we got the harmonic balancer and the flange off the back, we're gonna remove your tail housing part right here. Those are 10 millimeter bolts. Um, keep track of them, don't start mixing stuff up because that makes for a long day. All right, let's get the tail housing off. That will just uh, take a little bit of love to get that to uh, pop loose. I took a little screwdriver put up here and started to pry just a little bit, but you got to make sure you're not going to damage anything. Okay, so when you pull this tone ring off, you have to understand there's an indent pin right there, and it will line up with the notch you have right there, as you can see that. That pin right there will also come out, and it needs to come out. Don't lose them. All right, once we get that out, now we're going to split the case. There's like, I don't know, 18 or so 10 millimeter bolts that go all the way around the case. So get all those out. 
So just for reference, they're not all the same size. We discovered that the one up top is a, a different size. I think the thread pitch is different as well. I'm not so we're gonna make sure we put everything back to where it came from. So we've marked that one there. We'll pull that one out last. When we turn the case over, we'll see if there's any other differences. You're also gonna have one bolt that has a tab on there for some wiring. We're gonna discard it because we're not using it, but you may need it for yours. And if that's the case, make sure you mark where it goes. Everything needs to go back the same way. All right, getting the case apart is gonna take some creativity. On the 231, they give you little slots that you put a screwdriver in and start to separate a little bit. The 241 is not the case. So what we've done, we put together a nut and a bolt and then got a spacer to fill the gap and we're gonna slowly uh, loosen that nut and see if we can get just a start on the case. Um, this is untested, unproven, so if we break it, it's not my fault. <laughs> and all we wanna do is get the case started doing it and slowly let it come apart it's not going to move you're good to it is starting it isn't it mm -hmm. look at that slow we don't want to break the case yeah. once you get to a certain point that just drops right out you get going and the case just came right in half again be careful with these being made out of aluminum they will break rather than bend um, that's the setup we had right there. Something pretty simple. As you go to split the case, you wanna be very careful that you're pulling everything out straight, not cockeyeing anything, because you don't wanna start bending and breaking things. One of the things that you gotta be careful about is your oil pump and oil filter assembly, which is on the bottom. Uh, extra pair of hands definitely uh, helps out in this case. I just heard something drop. I don't know what it was. I don't know if that's going to be good or bad. We'll find out when we get it apart. <laughs> so the, the fork part came out. Um, what I would do is take a look and see where stuff goes. We're gonna add some pictures. We are actually going off of pictures that are on one of the forms too. So we're gonna verify stuff when we go to put it back. But that's what it looks like when you get it apart. Okay, so we're gonna pull off the spring with the cups. If you'll notice these, the ends of these springs have little cups that go to the spring there. Pull those out. Obviously identifying the order. The one thing, here, throw that back in for a second. The one thing I want to make sure you're paying attention to right now, last transfer case build we had was the location of the indent that you want it to go into. Um, that kind of gave us a couple fits till we figured out where it went. So identifying where that goes, maybe take some pictures, go from there. All right, we can take the fork out. Then after that, we're going to get that sprocket assembly out with the uh, planetaries. Actually, my planetaries the other side. There. Nope, they're there. That's that sprocket. And then there's your planetaries there. All right, so the next step now that we got that out of there is we have to get the Nice job, Vanna. We have to get the uh, cover off of this side here. You have, again, a bunch of what would appear to be 10 millimeter bolts. We'll get those off. Okay, if you uh, notice on the housing here, this one does have a, a indent for a screwdriver. You can put that in there and that will split it. You're off. Thank you. 
Just take a look inside. You got your planetaries right there. Make sure you give those a good inspection before putting everything together, but I would, just, I would think that they would be okay. I love watching gears. I do that all day long. Okay, so your planetaries uh, go up against this. You'll notice that it's indexed every other about an inch or so. This pulls straight up and out. Or it should. It's like trying to get a race out of an axle. Okay, there's a pain in the arse trying to get the input shaft seal out because there's nowhere to really access it. So if you look at the seal itself, it's gonna take some creative influencing, AKA some damage to, in order to access the snap ring that's in here. So the very next thing to come out is gonna be that snap ring. The seal's a pain in the ass, but don't be afraid to get after it in order to get it out. Once you get that snap ring up and over, it comes off the rest of the way. Don't let it pop you in the eyes, it comes off. If you look down inside this input shaft, you have a blind bearing in there. So you need a blind bearing puller uh, tool to get that out of there. This is what a blind bearing puller looks like. It's got a little lip on the edge. And then as you tighten it in, it gets underneath the bearing. It starts to separate in those three different dimensions, gets underneath the bearing, then you use a puller and it pulls the bearing up and out as you'll see here in just a second. First thing you gotta do is get the bearing to separate, get underneath the bearing. Once you get your bearing puller in there, now you have to get the actual jaw puller, which threads right on top of that. Pushes up against the um, surface there and it'll pull that bearing right out. Try to keep your jaws aligned, but you'll see how that thing starts screwing down and it's pulling the bearing up and out of the hole right now. If you come in any major resistance, you may want to make sure everything's seated correctly. But as you can see here, it seems to be pulling up fairly easily. There it is. That's how you get that out. Okay, so when you get the... Um, bottom cap out. So the puller we use pushes out that bottom cap. Here we used a shop press to just start moving that input shaft through the bearing. You can only go so far though the way you have it set up or you damage stuff, but you can pop it out with a hammer too. We've done that in the past, but this made it easier and more controlled. <coughs> okay, so input shafts out, planetaries come out. Make sure you're paying attention to what side everything goes. Take pictures along the way. We have a, a little uh, thrust, washer. thrust washer there, so make sure you keep everything in the order it goes. Now on your input side, you have a ring there that needs to be separated, and then the bearing will pull straight up and out. Let me phrase it, the bearing should pull straight up and out. <laughs> we have a way to manage to where it doesn't work that way, good. So my advice is when you're doing this stuff and you take stuff apart and you know you're at the end of one point, start rebuilding that point right away so you don't forget where stuff went or how it goes. This bearing here can go in either way when you're looking at it. It's got the line for the snap ring right in the middle. Both sides are the same. Drop it in. Release your snap ring. New bearing, you're good to go. All right, you gotta get this cap back in there. Remember we popped the other one out with the, um, with the puller, but before you do that, you have to get some uh, sealant in there and then you'll press that cap into place. Sealant's there to keep obviously things from leaking out the input shaft. As you start putting that in there and getting that uh, seated, there is a, there's a shoulder that that'll butt right up against. 
Okay, I'm going to save you a big headache right now. Before you get your uh, input shaft pressed onto that bearing, make sure that you take it and you put it back through your planetaries first and then press it in because if you don't, then the, uh, the input shaft won't fit through the planetaries and then you have to go find a new seal. And I'm not going to say that we had to do that today, but there's a high likelihood that it may have happened. So save yourself the effort. Watch this video a couple times before you get into that to make sure everything goes where it goes. Okay, once you get your input shaft put back in, again, the planetaries are in. You're going to know if you have the input shaft in deep enough because your snap ring will fall into that groove. If it doesn't fall into the groove, then you need to push it in just a little bit further. That went the whole way, I saw the whole thing. That was awesome. So that's it right there. Now we can move on to putting in the new, what are you laughing about? Now, what are you laughing about? Don't make the same mistake we did. Wait to put your seal in until you get this right. That's why we're making this video to save you some headache. Grease. Or your ATF, there you go. So it's wise to put a, a thin layer of either grease or ATF fluid back on the seal so it doesn't spin dry. And then it's gonna be a series of tap, tap, tap to get that to sit the rest of the way. In our case, we had a little collar here. Where'd that uh, bar go? The seal presses in pretty easy, so find something that'll fit it. Go until it stops. You can feel it and hear it. When it's all done, you're gonna notice that it's below that lip just a little bit, so that's what you need. Okay, now that we have the planetaries all set, we are done with this piece for now. Now we need to go to the other part of the case half here. We're gonna pull this seal out. So the seal's pretty thick, it's a little bit of a booger to get out. You may have to get something to kind of pry back with, just make sure you're not gonna damage your housing there. So get that out. Next up is a bearing. Okay, so in here to get this bearing out, you have another snap ring, but this one here requires the pin to collapse it in this way. You do that and then it pulls straight out. Make sure you get yourself a good pair of snap ring pliers. So the bearing comes out from this side. You have to take something and, and pound on the bearing there and it'll drop out the other side. In this case here, I'm using an old race from, oh, I don't even know what the hell it came from, but anyway, it fits perfectly there. So you take that, set that there, get yourself a dead blow, pop it out, falls all the way through. Okay, with that bearing, press back in. Don't forget to put your snap ring in on that. Okay, lastly, to finish off this side of the case, we want to put our seal in um, on this uh, yoke side right there. So you have a rubber lip that's on that inside part of the seal. So we took the old seal, we took the old seal and used that as our seal driver. That way we're not damaging the rubber lip. All right, to make life easier on yourself, put in the planetary ring gear on your planetaries, then turn that over and put it onto your case. These will slide straight in. It just makes it a little bit easier than trying to line up those planetary gears. And watch your fingers, because it's probably a pretty good pinch point here. Now you also notice that right here on this pin, you have the uh, alignment pin, so make sure you have that going to the right hole. Off one. There you go, but it'll turn. There you go. There she goes. Once you get your case half back on, get your bolt started, and then we're going to torque it down. 
All right, we almost got ahead of ourselves, and that's what's really tricky about these kinds of jobs. It's easy to forget things. If you recall, earlier we did a blind bearing uh, pull. Now we need to do a uh, bearing install, so we've got to get that pressed in next. So insert your bearing, get your uh, bearing seal press put in, get it set into place. All right, so when you go to start taking things out of here, pay particular attention, right here is your fork slot. You see how you have a difference of thickness right here versus this side, so make sure you know which side goes in when you pull it off. So the output shaft has a snap ring that you're gonna to have to get off. And as with all snap rings, it's a pain in my arse. All right, so when you take this gear off here, it's gonna slide right off, but I'm not sure if it's identical side to side, so take a look, and on this particular side, you're gonna see a little square there. We know that needs to go to the inside of that case. We're just gonna try to keep stuff in order. All right, so you're gonna notice that you have a snap ring here, but you can't get to it. This shaft pulls out with that shaft at the same time, so pull straight back. Move your case out of the way, set your stuff down, and then we're gonna make sure we orient or keep everything oriented so we don't start losing parts. So now we have the shafts out. We have to get in here. We have to pull this bearing out using the blind bearing puller, and we need to drive this bearing out the other side on this side. Set up your blind bearing puller. You gotta get it on there below the bearing. And as you adjust it, it starts spreading out. Make sure that you get it straight as you can. All right, we're hitting the easy button again with putting this bearing in. We used an old race from a gear job that I did. Put a little plate on top of it and we're using that to press the bearing right down in there. But again, be careful because you're dealing with aluminum. So once you throw it, start to bottom out. Don't go any further. All right, there's a bearing on the other side of this right here. You can barely push it on it with a dumb end of a hammer and it falls right out. So this comes right out, pull it out. Now while we have it apart, we're just gonna go ahead and put the new one right in. We'll get it cleaned up first. So it just presses right in my hand, there you go. All right, next up, we're gonna pull the seal from the tail uh, piece there, get that out, put the new seal in. So after driving out the seal, and you can just punch it from the inside with a screwdriver from the other side and drive it out this way. We're gonna put some RTV around the new seal. We'll get that punched in. So a little trick, we took the old seal and we're using that as our seal driver for the new seal so that way we're not hitting the rubber. So when you look at this thing, I wanna make sure one thing's very clear. When you go to press that thing on, before we took it off, I ver verified that the seal was flat to the lip here because you can drive it down in further. So make sure you only put it down as far as that lip right here. Now, because you have a new chain, it's going to be tougher to get that into that bearing. So you got to kind of wiggle it in there. And this is where having an extra set of hands really helps. Your far side's in deeper than this side. There you go. Now you're the opposite. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Okay, when you're installing your uh, shafts back in there, 
Don't forget, this shaft here has to get through your oil pump drive. There's a gear in there that can, that can kind of get offset. So the best thing to do is to prop this up on a couple blocks of wood, center that gear on the inside, and just take your time until you're sure that you've got it seated all the way. And you'll be able to look and tell that it's seated all the way. But we were struggling with that for a little bit to where uh, we couldn't engage that gear. Next, we're gonna put on the fork collar. At least that's what I'm calling it. Remember the square down. <clears throat> yeah, there it goes. All right, so that's on. All right, make sure that you get your new nylon pieces on both forks. You have two different pieces. All right, after you get your fork put in there, you'll notice the orientation. This points down, and this is where it's really important to pay attention when you're taking stuff apart. Luckily, we took some pictures. We went back and referenced to make sure that that part goes down inside the case. So next thing you want to make sure you get this snap ring right there put back on before we put the two halves back together. All right, we're at a point of assembly now that we got the forks and everything back in there. It's really important, take pictures of the stuff you do because you need to know where everything goes back together. I mean, there's so many different moving parts in here that can fall out and get out of place. We went back, referenced pictures on where everything goes. We have it in the right spot. So next we need to get our RTV on the case halves. And then we got to try to marry them up. And the problem we're going to face is that this piece moves, this piece moves, the two gear sets over there move, and it's going to be a pain in the rear trying to get everything lined up the right way to get these case halves to go together. Is the spring going? That's a big thing. So, okay, so the fork, you see how this gear right here is not coming off, so we're going to have to move that fork oh, a little bit. Pull it for you. Yep. Pain in the arse, fellas. Oh God, I just got my finger in there too, but I had it taken off. Okay. Yep. Okay, we got the case halves together. As you're starting to put these things together, it's not just gonna drop right in. You're gonna have to do a lot of wiggling. You have to be turning the output shaft. You wanna make sure that that uh, rod with the spring and the two caps falls into place. Once you get that all set, it starts uh, walking down a little bit better. On this other side, don't forget that this shaft has to drop through that bearing. So you have to get everything lined up right, wiggle, 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 until stuff drops into place. Now the easy part, we took a drill and uh, set the clutch lights, that way it doesn't drive them home. You do not want to use an impact when putting them in. You can use an impact while pulling them out, but not when you're putting them in. Okay, we talked about pulling the case back apart because our, our pin detent that holds the tone ring wasn't showing, so the shaft wasn't pushed in far enough, and that's because we didn't get it by the oil pump gear. So once you get that there, recommendation is going to be to put your tone ring on to hold the pin in place, and then when we go to set this half on top of this half, that keeps that pin from moving back through to the other side. So um, do that as you're dropping it back down on top of your case here, and you should be good to go. Deja vu, I felt like we've done this once before already. Okay, so um, the, the tail housing part here only goes on one way. These get torqued down to 12 to 18 pounds. The case half bolts are 15 to 20 pounds. And uh, that's all I got for now. So now we need to get the um, harmonic balancer and the flange on the backside here. That torque spec will be 190 to 230. Now you wanna get your speed sensor hooked up. Make sure your O-ring is attached to the part that's right inside there, because if not, apparently, Tyler says, it spews a ton of oil. Um, just so you know too, if you have a flange, if you haven't converted to a yoke on your rear output shaft, you're gonna need a special tool to hold that in place unless you have a huge set of, or a huge, uh, pipe wrench. In this case here, I set gears and I have this 
tool that I use. So that's kind of what you need to do that. All right, let's flip it over and get the other side. Okay, now you need to get your front out put shaft yoke on there. This one again, torque to 190 to, no, I'm sorry, it goes 90 to 130. So I'm gonna start it with the impact just to get it set. You still feel it's not on all the way. It's getting pretty close. All right, here's a crazy thought for you. Um, it's a hell of a lot easier to fill this thing up while it's still sitting outside of the Jeep. So you can put it up on the top side like that, take your uh, ATF plus four, and you're gonna put that in. The one thing you gotta make sure of is that your breather hose is reconnected down there, and then you have your breather hose up higher than where we're filling in. And then once we get it back on its side, everything will drain right back into the case. Once we're done with that, it's a simple, well, in your case, it's not a simple, but um, it'll be a simple install back into the Jeep and uh, get her all buttoned up. All right, so getting the transfer case back underneath your Jeep is relatively easy, except in this case, we have a savvy uh, skid, a tummy tuck under there, which pushes everything way up. So it's a little bit tougher for us to get to everything, but in your case, if you're still stock, it should be uh, fairly straightforward where you have access to all this stuff. Um, the nice thing is, is that the transfer case itself is what has these studs that come out. You can put that into your transmission and then it will hold itself while you uh, go to thread in the nuts. So at least you're not sitting there holding that, trying to do it at the same time. Now, if you're on your ground and your Jeep's on jack stands, you're gonna have to put this thing on your belly and pretty much bench press it up unless you have a transmission jack or maybe a motorcycle jack would be good for that. Um, but it, it's not too hard to do.